Hey everybody, Roblox Dev here, and this is part two of the cutscene tutorial, where today I'm going to be teaching you how to trigger a cutscene by stepping on a part, or maybe even clicking a button. So as you can see, I stepped on the part and the cutscene triggered. So there are a few problems with this. I can still walk around, even though the cutscene's playing, so we are going to be fixing these. And the other problem is, after the cutscene ends, Say I was still on this and I try to walk off, it would trigger again. So uh, those are some of the problems and I'm going to be showing you how to fix them and showing you the code that I added. So right here I have uh, replaced all of this code with all of this. So how does this work? Um, I've created a folder called cutscene parts just to make it a bit cleaner in the workspace. And uh, from there I have this part called trigger cutscene. And uh, when it's touched, we connect a function, and we also grab the hit parameter. The hit is the part that touched it, so it's going to be one of your player's body parts. Hit.parent is going to be your player's model, so uh, the model right here. Every player has a model, and they also have a player inside the player's service. So uh, it's going to be the player's model, the hit.parent. The body parts inside the player is going to be the hit. So hit, if hit.parent, find first child of class humanoid, so if there's a part called humanoid, it won't trigger, but only if there's a humanoid, it will trigger, and only players have humanoid, so when a humanoid uh, touches the part, and the debounce is false, so debounce false, if debounce is false, then debounce becomes true, and uh, we got the player, so player equals game to players, use the, using the built-in function, get player from character, again, the character is in the workspace, so hit.parent, hit is the body part, so the parent of the hit, and then that gives us the player, so then we fire to that one client only, we don't fire it to everyone in the server, just the one player who touched the part, so player, then the first part, the second part, the time, and we return cam. So from there, uh, after it's all over, we set debounce to false, and then we can trigger it again if we'd like. So uh, basically, uh, if we are running, say we're, you know, tweening, we're, we're doing this tween right here, uh, and the player, say we were to move around, what would happen is it would fire the event again, right? It would be touched. Then it would do this, you know, it would go through, play it again. It would be really, really bad. So the way we counter this is using debounce. So here we set debounce to true. So if the event is fired again, it would go through, but debounce would be true. It wouldn't be false anymore. So it wouldn't fire. And, and the cutscene would just play through, then it would be false, and then you can play it after that if you'd like, because it would check for it to be false, and we set it to false down here. That's how debounce works. So uh, now the problem we need to fix is players can move around while uh, the, cut, the cutscene is playing, so to fix this, I'm just going to uh, change the humanoid's walk speed down to zero while it's playing. So for this, we are just going to grab this piece of code here, place it here, and type dot walk, walk speed equals zero. So now the player is frozen. Uh, and let me just quickly check something. So the character, the humanoid, and down here you have the walk speed and you also have the jump height. So if I were to set the walk speed to zero, you can still jump. So we also need to make sure the jump height is also zero. So dot jump height equals zero. Now I'm just going to copy all of this, paste it after debounce is set to false, and just set it back to the default 16. And I don't remember what the jump height was, so I'm just going to quickly take a look at that. So the character, the humanoid, and down here, 7.2 and 16 for the walk speed. So we can just set that to 7.2. So now the player cannot move while the cutscene is running, but what about when the cutscene is finished? The player wants to move off the brick and the cutscene gets triggered again. That's going to be really, really annoying. So to fix this, I think we should just move the player away from the part. So to do that, I'm going, I'm going to insert an, an, cannot talk, an invisible part right here uh, that we can teleport the player to once the cutscene is triggered. So there's the invisible part. Well, it's not invisible just yet. There it is, it's invisible. Let's turn anchor to true and can collide to false. And sure, it can be right here, maybe even a bit bigger. 
So with that, what we can do is go ahead and go to the cutscene script and actually let's define the part. So let's call this uh, cutscene teleport. And uh, we can go back to the script and create a new variable for it. So uh, right here will be fine. Local cutscene. Cutscene. Uh, how about just teleport part equals workspace dot cutscene teleport. So now we are going to uh, teleport the player there once we, uh, you know, get the cutscene going. So after we set their walk speed and jump height to zero, we want to teleport them. So let's do that. Let's also insert a motor on this. So if we just go to plugins and down to the surface motor and right there now if we go to it uh not sure if it really worked it's a bit of an issue let's try it again uh surface motor there we go so now we can go down to surface and the top surface has motor so let's go to the front surface and insert a motor and make that smooth there we go so the front surface is on this side. We want the player to be uh, facing away from... Actually, let's make the uh, the player fa face towards the uh, part. So that looks good to me. Let's do transparency 1 and go back to the cutscene script and teleport the player. So let's do... Uh, let's see here. Hit dot parent. Actually, let's create a variable for that. Uh, local HRP for humanoid root part equals hit dot parent find first child humanoid root part and then we can do HRP dot C frame equals teleport part dot C frame and we can just add a vector three value. Uh, zero comma. Let's put them up in the air a little bit so they don't get stuck in the ground. Four studs should be good enough. So now they will teleport to the teleport part and just up in the air by four studs because we teleported them up in the air by four studs on the y axis. So now that we're done that, they should be moved away from the part so the cutscene will not trigger twice and we should be good. So if we hit play and step on the part. Let's go to the server, and as you can see, I was teleported to the part. I should probably move it a bit uh, farther farther away, but we, you can always do that later. Right here, the cutscene is running perfectly fine through here, and in. okay. So we also got the camera back, and we're free to walk around. So I think that's really cool. Uh, we can move this away. Uh, I think I'm also going to make a part 3 where we can use a button on the screen to trigger the cutscene. So that goes into GUI, so that will be a whole other video in itself. Anyways, it's Roblox Dev. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss the video. And in case you lose my channel, um, you know, you don't want to lose my channel. You can always watch that video later. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.